Uh, one, I think I, I'd like to, to uh, jump on that, that Ken mentioned is that uh, notion of deciding whether real estate will be a strategic asset. I uh, once had a uh, uh, the, the uh, top of real estate executive for a major um, Canadian uh, grocery chain comment about Loblaws. Um, and this was a grocery chain that leased. And the, um, and the comment was, I feel um, like the boxer without a jab because he can play keep away. And I can't. And at a time in particular, like the next five years, when playing keep away can be an exceptionally valuable strategic tool, um, even if it is not to exploit a specific resource, uh, this will dictate um, many location by location decisions that uh, uh, if it were a level playing field would be would be taken differently. So that I think that is a tremendous. It's not something you can simply jump into because the capital structure of the entire company has to change if you're going to do those those kinds of things. Um, but that was a comment, um, that was a lament from a competitor um, who uh, couldn't use it as a strategic component. I guess I'd just say three things and it, it, it fits with what we've said uh, um, so far is you've got how often do you have a punch telegraphed two years in advance? <coughs> Invest in your stores now. Um, the, uh, uh, and, and that is while, uh, while I will um, uh, criticize the Canadian banking system for not investing in merchandise as collateral. That's not investing in merchandise as collateral banks. Um, I do believe that they will invest in real estate, and that's something where you can get the financing you need to be in a state of readiness for the competitors coming. The, um, the second is not to lose sight of, of uh, loving your best customers. That's the soft side of the way that the Lululemon um, associate meets you or the Starbucks person meets you and so on, that the best brands integrate their service, that it is not the notable exception with, uh, from, uh, from store to store. That's high touch, but also on the high tech side. That is where you are harnessing those data. Canadian Tire has a tremendous asset. I hope someday I'll learn that the Canadian Tire Bank actually goes forward to the next stage. I believe it's a tremendous strategic use of that bank um, in ways that those who have affiliated themselves, for example, with, uh, with secondary banks can't take advantage of the, um, of, of arguably the number one benefit of being a big retailer, and that's legal money laundering. And, um, <laughs> and, and yet somebody else is dealing with it. And uh, the best company in the world at doing this is in a transition process about learning how to be a bank with a partner and then going back, and that is Tesco, who is buying out the Royal Bank of Scotland's partnership and is going to do what the clever people at Canadian Tire, who may have been moving somewhat glacially in their tests, I believe have a, a major strategic use of those, uh, of those data, which will simply be the happy byproduct of an intelligent use of the cash that flows through retail and understanding their individual customers so much better because it is actually applying those RFID tags to your customers. And then you can know for the very first time how to actually please the customer as he or she walks in the door and almost literally find a way to bar the door to bad customers. Because there are customers who need firing. Um, <laughs> and, not, uh, not in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and the last, the last one is innovate and innovate in ways that I think even Target has shown in their alliance with Sobeys. This may be the time to address the Canadian um, supply chain inefficiencies, for example, with the creation of something that's more than just bilateral cooperative agreements between competitors, but the creation of supply chain community property, not unlike the way things like food terminals work where everyone comes in and buys in local areas, but that you actually have shared space with somebody else's tomatoes going to competitive stores. That is a possibility if we can get around, and I take, you know, I'm part of this, the, um, the most siloed industry in our country is retail, and the notion of speaking to the other side is anathema. It took a foreigner come in and knock on Sobe's door to have that kind of uh, potential collaboration and that, that notion of innovative relationships in addressing um, not just supply chain but other related infrastructural costs um, that, uh, that could be shared for mutual advantage. And then you differentiate yourself with what's on the truck and how it's priced, but let's let, the, uh, uh, let's, let's let that disadvantage be eliminated. The very last one, I guess, is uh, uh, 
uh, is a concerted effort by the retail business to uh, industry to get rid of import duties on items that we don't make in this country. I'm sure you're, you're dealing with a whole lot of that, especially if it's apparel, um, where uh, Bank of Canada has estimated that the, uh, the net effect is about 11 percent, and um, and the actual blended cost the retail council uh, has estimated of retail duties is 11 percent. So if you want to stop uh, your customers from defecting and complaining that, uh, that the same goods are cheaper in the in a Walmart on in Buffalo than it is in a Walmart in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Call your MP.